Hey guys, so in this video, we're gonna be talking about the benefits of cordyceps mushroom. So, let's dive right in. Hey guys, my name is Zach, and welcome to Nutrition Library, where we take an evidence-based approach to supplementation and nutrition. If you haven't already, do me a huge favor and hit the red subscribe button that's below this video so that you can stay up to date with all of our future content. Thank you so much. Now, the first health benefit that we're gonna talk about in this video is cordyceps benefit for exercise performance. And this actually happens to be uh, literally the only health benefit of cordyceps mushrooms that has actual human clinical research done to back it. The other two primary health benefits that we're gonna talk about in this video uh, do have some evidence for being effective, but but most of that research has only been performed in rodents um, as well as in vitro studies which are simply studies where um, scientists take cell cultures and uh, inoculate them with specific compounds outside of living models and so um, a lot of the the interactions that you see in in vitro studies don't typically all the time transfer into rodent uh, studies and then a lot of things that are performed in rodents uh, don't actually translate into humans. So I would take a, some of this with a grain of salt. Um, however, when it comes to cordyceps improvement um, in exercise performance, there does seem to be some promising potential with the existing uh, research. Now, it does appear that cordyceps only is beneficial for a very subset and very specific type of exercise um, that utilizes a very specific energy uh, pathway in the body known as anaerobic glycolysis. Now, I'm not gonna dive super hardcore into what anaerobic glycolysis is, um, but glycolysis and more specifically anaerobic glycolysis is a very specific uh, energy pathway that your muscles use in order to um, fuel uh, super high intensity but medium duration exercises. So think things like 100 to 200 to 400 yard sprints um, or things like high intensity, high weight, high repetition uh, weightlifting. Now, the reason that cordyceps seems to improve um, anaerobic glycolysis is that um, it seems to at least improve the lactate threshold. Now, uh, lactate is a compound um, that most of you are probably familiar with if you've spent any type of time doing any athletic activity or have spent any time in the gym. And lactate is a molecule that builds up that causes uh, the proverbial burn um, when you're doing a high rep, high intensity workout. Now, the reason lactate builds up or uh, otherwise known as lactic acid builds up in mus muscle tissue is that when the muscles are trying to burn glucose in the absence of oxygen, uh, they begin to produce a byproduct um, of lactate as an alternative fuel source and as a protection mechanism. Now, they produce it as an alternative fuel source in order to, again, fuel the muscle cells while while there is a lack of oxygen during uh, high intensity workouts, but also it's produced as a protection mechanism to pretty much keep your body from going too hard too often. So what it appears is going on here is that cordyceps may have the potential to either one, um, assist muscle cells in utilizing lactic acid as a fuel source, or two, which I think is less likely, uh, but is still possible, um, is that it could possibly also uh, be neutralizing and helping to neutralize the lactic acid that's in the muscle tissue. Now, the next two benefits that we're gonna talk about have only been performed in rodents and have in vitro evidence behind them. 
However, because they also confirm some of the subjective experiences of the users of Cordyceps, I did think it was noteworthy to mention them. Now, the second benefit of Cordyceps uh, seems to be that it has the potential to improve cognition. And one of the reasons that I think Cordyceps is so interesting is that um, it shows some potential as being a stimulating compound um, and has the potential to kind of increase work capacity while at the same time being able to reduce the markers of stress. Now, the reason I think this is so interesting is that uh, almost every compound that I'm aware of that is classified as a stimulant also increases the markers of stress in the body. And a perfect example of this is something like caffeine uh, that obviously is a very stimulating compound while at the same time also increases the markers of stress, increases blood pressure, increases things like cortisol, which is your primary stress hormone. Um, and so I'm not saying that caffeine is a bad compound to consume on a regular basis. There is some evidence to the contrary. However, what I am saying is that when you do consume too much of caffeine, that it is going to consistently increase the markers of stress on the body, which isn't necessarily a good thing either. Now, the proposed mechanism here is that cordyceps has the potential to upregulate a very specific subset of adenosine receptors. Now, um, adenosine is a molecule that kind of builds up throughout the day and binds to the adenosine receptors receptors towards the end of the day, which actually induces uh, tiredness and sleepiness and helps to induce sleep. And this is actually the primary mechanism by which caffeine um, actually causes stimulation. So caffeine actually comes in and blocks the adenosine receptor and prevents adenosine from binding um, to these adenosine receptors and subsequently increases uh, wakefulness as well as stimulation. Now, where this gets interesting is that almost every single adenosine receptor, there's several um, subclasses of adenosine receptors and every single one of them, um, when stimulated by adenosine, again, um, induces tiredness, induces a state of sleepiness, except for one, and that is the, um, the adenosine 2A receptor. Now, the reason this is interesting is that um, the A2A receptor, when stimulated, actually causes stimulation, um, which is fairly interesting, but is also kind of explains why some aspects of cognition are actually improved in the evening time. Um, things like uh, creative focus have been shown to be increased actually in the evening time, which is why a lot of uh, creative individuals like to read in the evening because there's a, a better processing for them. Um, but I say all that to say that cordyceps is a stimulator of that receptor and an upregulator of that receptor, meaning um, that it increases the capacity of your body to be stimulated by adenosine rather than sedated by adenosine. Now, what all this means exactly and precisely, I'm not quite sure yet. However, this is a proposed mechanism as to why cordyceps has the capacity to, uh, one, increase a state of stimulation while at the same time decreasing uh, the markers of stress as well. Now, the third possible health benefit uh, of cordyceps is a possible um, improvement and increase in testosterone levels. Now, again, these have only been performed in rodents and in vitro studies, so there's no uh, direct research in humans yet. And uh, the mechanisms here are fairly complicated. Um, and the reason for that is um, it's been shown in some in vitro studies that cordyceps has the capacity uh, to inhibit and stop luteinizing hormone induced testosterone production. So if any of you guys have seen my previous videos, um, I, I I like to talk about luteinizing hormone a lot because it is the primary stimulating hormone for the testicles to produce testosterone. And so what it appears like is cordyceps actually kind of 
um, breaks that chain a little bit and inhibits and prevents luteinizing hormone from stimulating the testicles to produce testosterone, which isn't necessarily a good thing. However, it's also been shown to increase an enzyme known as the STAR enzyme, which is an enzyme that's involved in the latter stages of testosterone production. Um, so what it looks like is it's kind of slowing down the beginning stages, but overcoming that, uh, that negative aspect of testosterone production um, with increasing a enzyme that's required to increase testosterone production. So again, the mechanisms here are fairly complicated, but um, all the rodent trials that have been performed at the moment that have been performed in healthy rodents, which is promising, um, have all shown a general increase in testosterone production. So I'm gonna be very interested to see the clinical research that comes about in the next few years. And so guys, that's about it. I'm actually kind of a fan of cordyceps. I've tried it a handful of times. Um, you have to get a really good, a, 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 at least a decent um, extract to really kind of experience uh, cordyceps. However, when you do get a good extract, I've had some good experience with it in improving um, athletic performance, at least in a subjective way. But again, I'm going to be super interested to see um, the research that comes about in the next few years. But uh, other than that, guys, if you have any questions, as always, leave a comment down below and I will see you guys next time.